Welcome to Image Autopsy. I'm Garrett Polkas, host of this web series. The Last Breath team and I have over 12 years of trail camera data that has led to the harvesting of some amazing whitetail bucks. In this series, we're gonna break down and dissect trail camera photos and videos and explain how we use that data to target and harvest these big deer. Each episode, we're going to showcase a particular buck that we have hunted and harvested. The goal of this series is to show you and better understand how we've used trail cameras to become more efficient hunters and more effective whitetail hunters. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel as we will be dropping a brand new episode each week. From summer scouting to the very last day of season, we break it all down. Thanks again for tuning in to Moultrie's Image Autopsy. Welcome to Moultrie's Image Autopsy season two. Today we're talking about understanding the lack of mature deer on your cameras. Specifically, why? And we're gonna look at a buck that Mal was able to harvest called Hanson. Hanson was a very mature, very, very big bodied bully buck that was on one of his farms. The farm that Matt and Jesse were hunting is about 150 acres, with half of it being grassy timber, the other half of it being agricultural ground. Typically they'd run anywhere from three to six cameras, depending on the time of the year, to cover their needs on the farm. When they started running cameras, they recognized Hanson from the years prior. They really concentrated their camera efforts on scrapes and noticed that Hanson was visiting almost all of the active scrapes on the farm. And they also noticed a lack of other mature deer and other bucks in general, probably and majority due to Hanson tying down this farm and running all the other deer off. One of the key things to note here is that Matt and Jesse exclusively ran their cameras on video mode set to 60 second clips. With this, they could really analyze how Hanson was acting, specifically in the scrapes, and again, specifically when or if other deer were present. After noting how aggressive he was, how dominant he was, that really played a role in how they would hunt and set up on this buck come November. By understanding this information, Matt knew that Hanson had laid claim to this farm. He knew that by just persistently sitting there, eventually Hanson would make his way by, and also not to get discouraged by the lack of other deer. They recognized that Hanson was a dominant buck, Hanson was an aggressive buck, and he pushed a lot of the younger or some of the even other mature nice deer out of there. So by just persistently hunting him, he was given an opportunity to harvest Hanson. All right, here's a little status update. Hanson is in the corn. He's out there with the doe locked down. She's kind of trying to work south a little bit. He's going down, baby. He's going down. I gotta give him a bunch of time. These little bucks just pestered this doe to the point where they had no choice. She jumped the fence and I shot him at like 20. I shot him right freaking there, man. There was just too much chaos to turn this other angle on. I was more worried about focusing on getting that deer killed. I hit him right in the fret and the brisket and blood was just dumping out of him immediately. I'm gonna give him Plenty of time. I mean, plenty of time. I'm not coming out of this tree until his head is on the ground and he is dead. As a six and a half year old freaking stud, I've watched him for three hours this morning. <sighs> so this is Hanson. This is a deer that Jesse and I know pretty well, especially the last couple years. We actually were hunting him late season last year, trying to kill him 
coming across the road to eat in our stock field. And this year he's just been blowing our cameras up. I mean, he's been here and here every day since Hurricane got killed. So he's a six year old, we believe. We know he's at least five, at least five. Who knows, you know, he could even be older than that. This is uh, as big as he's ever been. Last year he had a little cool inside point here. This year he didn't get it. But uh, he's been in here almost every single day, just about like me. I've been in here trying to kill him to uh, basically get him out of here because he has everything else that was decent on our cameras ran out. He's lit, we, he got uh, seen last week beating up on a really pretty four-year-old we have in here that's probably in the mid to high 150s. We'd like to see him come back. But this Hanson, I shot him, what, nine o'clock this morning. I shot him frontal, which is a pretty sketchy shot to do, but it's all I had, and I trust my gear, so. Shot him frontal, and he died 120 yards from the stand, 120 yards from impact. Died in his first bed. We left him lay four hours, so just to be sure, with a shot like that, I wanted to be sure. I didn't want to kick him up and risk bumping him or losing him, so. I'm tagged out and we got a few more to go.